Hey, AP Cancers, this is Mrs. Vandalay bringing you part two of uh, chapter three, section five. We continue on ionic naming, and this section will deal with the rules for polyatomic ions. Now, I have already given you the polyatomic ion sheets to memorize. I have put on uh, Google Classroom a link to a Quizlet to know your polyatomic ions. You have to have these memorized forwards and backwards. So the name, you have to know, uh, you know, the formula plus the charge. If I give you the formula, you have to know the name. Um, so I can't emphasize enough that you have to know your polyatomic ions. All right, that being said, let's see what this is uh, talking about here. It says, like the problems above, the ones that were on the last episode, if the anion is monatomic, what does that mean? Monoatomic single ion, then it's just the base name plus I, just like we've been doing, sodium chloride, copper two iodide. Notice they're both binary ionic compounds. Uh, you only have two different elements and that's it. If the anion, or in the case of ammonium, the, the uh, cation contains more than one element, it's called a polyatomic ion. What does that mean? Many atomed ion. So for example, NaOH, well, how many different elements do you see? I see sodium, oxygen, hydrogen. That tells me I have a polyatomic ion in there. So you have to recognize what it is. So it's sodium, then you have to recognize the OH as a group called hydroxide. I can't tell you how many times as a teacher throughout all these years I've seen sodium oxygen hydride. That makes no sense, okay? Uh, you have to recognize, once you recognize sodium, then the remaining has to be a polyatomic ion. Uh, what about the next one? We have a copper and a carbonate. So it is um, also a polyatomic ion. I see three different elements. Um, and we're going to figure out how do I know it's a Roman numeral 2, okay? All right. So it says to write the formulas with the polyatomic ions. Uh, the same rules apply with one additional um, rule, okay? First of all, you have to know the charges. That's why you have to have them memorized. If the charge is canceled, then just write down the elements without any additional subscripts. If the charges do not cancel, they have to crisscross the subscripts, just like what we did before. Here is the added rule. If you need more than one polyatomic ion, first put a parenthesis around it and then put the subscript around it. Okay, so for example, sodium sulfate, do the charges cancel? No, so crisscross. How many sodiums do you need? Two. How many sulfates do you need? Well, look at this. One. No parentheses are needed. But look at tin 4 phosphate. The charge of tin is plus 4. You had to memorize phosphate is 3 negative. When you crisscross, you get three tins. You get four. Four is more than one, folks. So put the parentheses around the phosphate first and then put the four in. Okay, hopefully you remember that. Um, so let's go ahead and name these compounds. All right, the first one is lithium. Where is lithium found on the periodic table? It is a group one. Do you need Roman numerals for group one? No. So all you have to do is write lithium and then what is Cr2O7? One you had to memorize, it's a dichromate. Now what about the next one, tin? Tin is a transition metal. Does it need Roman numerals? Yes, it does. Do you remember how I figured that out last time? I reversed the crisscross, didn't I? So over here, I don't know what uh, the, I'm sorry, I do know the charge of chlorate. Let me try this again here. I do know the charge of chlorate. It's negative one. So I, my subscript of 10 is one. So that makes sense because that is the charge of chlorate. So what does that mean? What is the, hello, what is the charge of tin? Uh, well, what is the subscript of chlorates right here? So it is tin has a Roman numeral two. So it's tin two chlorate, okay? Now let's just pretend over here, this was let's say copper instead of a lithium, all right? So let's kind of cross out the lithium and put a copper. Why am I doing this? Because what would the charge of copper be? Did the charges cancel? In the case of this, yes. Why? Copper would not have a subscript, and there are no parentheses around the dichromate. So if you do not see a subscript or a parenthesis, then you know the charge is canceled. So what is the charge of dichromate? You had to memorize it, it's negative two. So that would be copper Roman numeral two dichromate. 
So because there was no parentheses here, and then when I just substitute uh, copper there, there's no subscript there, that told me the charges have already canceled out. So whatever the charge the dichromate would be, would be the charge of this particular copper, okay? Now, next is writing the formulas, okay? So uh, let's get that set up. All right, so we need to write the formulas for cobalt 2 permanganate. So what is the charge of cobalt? Well, folks, I gave you a Roman numeral. There's not a whole lot of thinking about it, is there? All right, so the charge of cobalt is 2 plus, all right? Permanganate, you have to have this memorized. MnO4, what's the charge? 1 minus, all right? So what's the first thing you need to ask yourself? Do the charges cancel out? And the answer is no, they don't. So what do you have to do, everyone? You have to criss cross. So how many cobalts do you need? Just one. So how many permanganates do you need? Two. So what do you have to do? You have to put what? Parentheses around the permanganate and then put a two over here. Okay, so because you needed more than one permanganate, you had to put parentheses around it and then put the two. Okay, what about the next one? Um, ammonium. That's a special one, isn't it? Is that ammonium the only positive polyatomic ion you ought to know? Yes, it is. All right, so what's acetate? Well, some people say it looks like kachu. All right, I don't know if that helps you or not, but here's acetate. You might also see acetate written as CH3COO negative. Either one is fine, okay? So you had to know the charges, ammonia is plus one, acetate is negative one. What question do you ask yourself next? Do the charges cancel? And what's your answer? Yes. So do you have to crisscross? No, just write these down as is, and that is your final answer, okay? No crisscrossing needed because the charges are to cancel. All right, what are the next one? Barium sulfate. Uh, there's no Roman numeral, Mrs. Vandoli. What does that mean? It's an always, always. Look barium on your periodic table, and what is its charge? Did you find it? It is plus two. Cyanide. What do you have to do with cyanide? You have to memorize it. What is cyanide? It is right here. So what question do you ask yourself? Do the charges cancel out? And the answer is no. So what do you have to do? You need to crisscross. Well, how many bariums do you end up with? Just one. How many cyanides do you end up with? Two. Two is more than one. So you have to put the whole thing in parentheses first and then put the two on the outside. Hey, folks, what would happen in the case of uh, barium cyanide if you did not put your parentheses down there and all you did is put the two out here? What does that mean? You have one barium, one carbon, and two nitrogens. But when you put the parentheses around it, do you remember what that means? I have one barium, two carbons, because this is like the distributive. You distribute the two inside and two nitrogens. Uh, the parentheses are so important. All right, let's keep going. Zinc sulfite. What's the charge of zinc? Hmm, there's no Roman numerals. Oh, that's because it's an always, always. The charge of zinc is two plus. Sulfite, hopefully you remember that, is SO3, two minus. What do you notice? Do the charges cancel out? Yes, they do. So what do you have to do here? All right, so if the charges already cancel out, you just do this. There is no crisscrossing. There is no parentheses needed. It's just ZnSO3. All right, here is potassium hypochlorite. So there's no Roman numerals. So you just look at your periodic table and what is the charge of potassium? Plus one. I'll put it right here. Hypochlorite. All right. I like to write as OCL negative. You might write as CLO negative. This is a time when it really doesn't make a difference which element is written first, all right? But typically OCL is the more common way. So what do you ask yourself? Do the charges cancel? And the answer is yes, they do. So do you have to crisscross? No, just write them down. So it's K, OCL, you are done, okay? How about the next one, potassium hypoiodite? Mrs. Vandewally, you never taught us hypoiodite. I don't know what that is. 
Well, I bet you are smart enough you can figure it out. So, hey, what's this? Perchlorate, chlorate, chlorite, hypochlorite. Well, take a wild stab at what you think this is. This is per iodate. Iodate. Iodite. Hypoiodite. Can you figure what perbromate would be? Bromate, bromite, hypobromite. So now you know what hypoiodite is. You probably know what hypobromite is too, for that matter, but I didn't ask you that one. So what is potassium? Hey, I just saw that one. K plus. What's hypoiodite? Oops. It is not that. Go away. Go away. All right, here we go. So let's try. Oh, there we go. And then what do you do? Hey, the charges already cancel. So you just do this. Okay. So what do you think potassium hypobromite would be? It'd be K-O-B-R. Okay, that's pretty easy, wasn't it? Let's go on to the next page. All right, section 3.6 is molecular compounds, formulas, and names. So what's a molecular compound? These are your nonmetal nonmetals, okay? Uh, for our purposes here, they're going to also be binary. Um, these are molecular. There's no ions. There, there's no charges. There's no crisscrossing, all right? These are your nonmetals that are sharing their electrons. So how do you name them? There's a prefix if it's more than one and then the name of the first element, then you must always have a prefix here, and then the base name plus ide. So these are all gonna end in ide as well. So what are these prefixes I'm talking about? Do these prefixes ring a bell? Let's scroll down a little bit. Do you recognize these? One is mono, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra. Hey, you know what my favorite computer game was early on? It was called Tetris. Do you know how many blocks are in each of the uh, shapes in Tetris? Four. And then penta, hexa, hepta, aka, nana, and deca. Why don't you take a minute out and copy those down. All right, so like I said before, if there is only one atom of the first element of the formula, then don't put mono. All right, so NO is nitrogen monoxide. Notice that the second element, the oxygen, still has its prefix. All right, so nitrogen monoxide. Uh, what about the next two? What do you see here? Do you see uh, two nitrogens? I do. So then what? Uh, what would that be? Dinitrogen monoxide. Let me scooch that up here. Oh, come here, come here, stop. There we go, dinitrogen monoxide. Good, why don't you do problem number 10 here? Oops, oops, oops. Problem number 10, pause this, fill this out, and see how you do. Okay, pause this. All right, how'd you do? So did you get nitrogen triiodide? Yep, the two eyes go together. Did you get phosphorus pentachloride? Uh, tetraphosphorus decasulfide. That's a mouthful, isn't it? And finally, dinitrogen pentaoxide. Um, so very, very straightforward. You just write down what you see. If the first element is only one, no prefixes. So go ahead and write the uh, formula for the next two. So go ahead and pause this and rejoin me when you're done. So hopefully you got PBR3 for phosphorus tribromide and H2O for dihydrogen monoxide. But wait a minute, that looks like water. Well, you're right, it is water. Do we typically call it dihydrogen monoxide? No, we don't. We call this an exception. Use common name for water and ammonia. Um, notice that I didn't put any carbons in here. Uh, the reason being that carbon has an entire branch of chemistry called organic. Hey, you can take that class if you'd like. Uh, it's also its own naming system. I'll give you a brief intro later on in this chapter. I think this is a great place to end. So I will join you again when we name our acids. Don't wait to be great.